Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new, my name is Kiriel, welcome. Today I'm going to be dip diving into my Nikki Tutorials X Beauty Bay palette again. I wanted to kind of make these a little bit softer and not too dramatic, just because when you look at this palette, I feel like it can be a little bit intimidating. But I just wanted to show you a few different looks that I've created with this palette. I've been playing with it a lot. For my day-to-day -day life, I've just been playing around with this. If I wanted to wear makeup, I've been picking this up and playing with it. So I'm creating three looks in this video. This is one of them. It's kind of like a fall inspired look which I really like the tones of. But yeah I'm gonna be using a variety of tones in here and I do use a few of the colors. I create a soft look with those colors. So if you're interested in seeing how I created these looks then just keep on watching. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified of new videos that I upload. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into the first eye look. Okay guys, so this is the eye look we're going to be creating. It's a little bit of a neutral kind of cut crease with a little bit of sparkle. I am going to extend the inner corner but I'm going to do that with liner so we'll do that in a little bit. But let me show you how I did this. So I'm trying out a different base with it today. I'm using the Revolution Cut Crease Canvas. I'm just going to slather this all over the lid. <laughs> I just spread this out with my brush and then pat over it with my sponge just to get rid of any excess. So first off I'm going to go in with a mixture of the shade Mila and Basic Trut. <laughs> I'm literally taking two little dabs of each and this is going to create a nice soft transition shade without being overpowering. Obviously if you've got a deeper complexion than me then you could probably just go in with Mila by itself but I need something to soften it a little so I'm going in with Basic Truth. I think that's going to be one of my most used shades because it just pales out the rest of the deeper shades in the palette but I'm just going to start kind of like my basic shape. I'm doing this with my eyes open first of all so I can get the basic shape so I know what my eyes are going to look like when they're relaxed and then I'm gradually building up the colour and creating out that swooped shape with the shadow. Now I have that kind of faded out, I'm going to go straight in with the shade Mila with a very light touch, tap off all the excess and then I'm just going to start building this up slightly lower, closer towards where the cut crease is going to be. And I'm just using the same brush to do this, just because I feel like it helps blend in. With these shadows I do definitely find it's easier to build up the colour rather than going straight in with the pigment. They are pressed pigments so I just feel like they're easier to work with that way. Now we kind of have like the shape going and also a nice blend, I'm going to go in with the shade 5am and I'm going to take just the very tip of my brush into the shade. This is a very dark shade so I don't really need that much. <laughs> Tapping off all the excess and I'm gonna go underneath where I want my cut crease to be to really get that gradient because I really don't want the harsh line, I just want the gradient there. So I'm just gonna start just underneath where I want the cut crease and using feather light motions to get the least amount of payoff because I don't want the colour there but I want it to be very soft. I'm holding my brush at the very bottom so I've got a very light touch. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go in with 5am again with the same brush and everything, but I'm just going to go in with a little bit of a firmer hand, and the way I do that is I literally just bring my hand up the brush, and it just creates a slightly firmer hold, but you don't have to go in with a crazy amount of pigment or anything, it's literally just the force that you're using with the brush, so I'm just going to do that. Don't worry if you go below the line, we're going to cut the crease anyway. Now I'm going back in with the brush I used for the first colours and I'm just going to do little light circular motions around the edges to blend that darker shade up. But I don't want to carry it too far, you know. So, as you can probably see, this eye is a lot higher, so I'm going to quickly go and just sort this eye out and match it up with this eye. And then I'm going to cut the crease with the cut crease canvas again and then we'll do the rest of the lid. Now I'm going to set the base with the shade Basic Truth. I feel stupid whenever I say that, but I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> but I'm literally just going to 
set the lid, nothing too special. I really like the shade though, it works really well for my skin tone. I know Nikki is pale so she kind of put it in the palette for this reason I think, for like blending up shadows, but I've never been able to find a lid shade like this for like soft glam and things like that for my skin tone. They've always been too dark, but this works so well and I'm so happy I have the shade now. Now for the liner part, I'm going in with the shade 5am on a little angled brush like this one and I'm just going to join up this line to my lash line on the outer corner and then I'm going to bring it in kind of like a normal winged liner. Obviously I have to kind of adapt it because of my lid shape because otherwise it'll transfer and things like that but just doing kind of a wing liner but with shadow. I match it up to my outer corner with my eye open and then I close my eye and just fill in any gaps that are there. With the actual liner on my lid I've created it a little bit thicker on the ball of my eye just because I am going to be adding shimmer so I need a little bit of width there to add the shimmer on top. Then I've tapered it on the inner corner. I taper it by almost going up and into my eye, you know, like you would kind of tight line. I just do that with my brush to get it really tight on the inner corner. Okay, so you can stop here. If you want this is a pretty matte look by itself but I wanted to add some shimmer I've gone in with the shade underground and I just pat this over top of the brow I just think it picks up the light really nicely and just adds a little more something something to the look you know so I literally just pat over like this I'm actually just gonna make the liner a little bit thicker there just because I want some more shimmer I am just gonna dampen it a little bit to get the best payoff I actually did not do that for this eye so we'll see what the payoff is like with it being wet, I'm pretty sure it's going to be more intense, which is what I want. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better. I have found the shade underground is pretty crumbly, so it gets on your face quite a lot. So I would suggest doing your eyes before you do your base and everything. So that is the eyes pretty much all done. This is a pretty simple look in a way, but it's really pretty. I'm going to go put on my lashes, put on my base, and then we'll finish up the eyes together. So I'll see you in a sec. So I finished up this eye, put on a lash. I really love this look. It's so simple but pretty. Let's finish up this eye with you guys. I'm going in with the shade Mila and I'm just taking this fully across the lower lash line and leaving a little bit of a gap in the inner corner and bringing it slightly further down. It kind of increases the shape of my eye just a little bit. Doesn't do a lot but it does something subtle which I like so. <laughs> trying to apply it straight across so it makes my eye seem more album shaped than round so I'm not dragging it down very far. I'm just joining it up with the outer corner, just blending a little bit of this colour into the deeper shade. For the outer corner, I'm going to take the shade 5am and I'm literally just keeping it on the outer third. It helps elongate the eye when you do this because it just adds a little bit of shadow, so I'm just going to quickly do that and then I marry it up with the outer wing that I've created, so it just makes it all cohesive and together. Alright, now I'm just going to tight line with brown and I'm going to extend my inner corner with this as well with a little brush. This little nubbin of a pencil. I really need to get a new one, but yeah, I've clearly loved this guy. The inner corner, I literally just take a little liner brush and I just drag this because this stays on for quite a while. I find the cold pencils usually stay on quite a while in my inner corner because otherwise if I use like a liquid, it tends to bleed on me quite a lot. I'm going to put another well-loved pencil into my waterline, this is the Nude. Okay, I'm going to throw on my mascara, my lashes, I also forgot to do my brows. <laughs> So I'm going to quickly go do that and then that'll be the finished look. By the way, I went over the center with the shade all in because I wanted a little bit more sparkle and then I also used my highlight in the inner corner and just brought it up slightly where the cut crease starts because I just think it brings light to that area. Just to finish this off, I'm going to go in with this just big fluffy brush. It's got no product on it and I'm just going to lightly go over the edges just to seal the deal, make sure everything's just completely blended to my liking. I just want just a little bit more blend, you know? <laughs> I haven't done wings in a long time, so I think that's one thing. I'm not used to like a half line. I just like everything blended these days, but 
I don't mind a wing, you know. <laughs> Alright, brushes down. I, I could fiddle with this all day, but I do really like the look, so this is it with lashes and everything. I hope you guys like this one. It's just a subtle cut crease, but I really like the colours. Really nice neutral tones. They are warm tones, and I like that touch of glimmer in the centre as well. I think it really pops this look off and make it a little bit more special than just a normal cut crease, you know? Yeah, so that's it for this one. I shall see you in the second look. <laughs> So this is the look we are doing now. It's very soft, very subtle, but it's with colour, so I really like this one. This is the one that I was talking about when I did my first video. This is what I kind of imagined. Please ignore my brows, I've just <laughs> dyed them and haven't really tamed them, so they're a bit like all over the place. But it's just about the eyeshadow, not my eyebrows. Okay. <laughs> Let's get on to this one. I'm just gonna quickly prime with the Revolution Cut Crease Canvas real quick. I actually think this is discontinued and they don't sell it anymore. They've replaced it with something else, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's no longer on sale. I'll have to double check. Just gonna pat over that lightly with my sponge to take away any excess. Even though I'm not really using that much product, I just like to do this to soften it. Okay, so the first shade I'm going in with is Soma. Soma. I know it's Dutch, so I'm probably saying it wrong. <laughs> I'm going in and tapping ever so lightly with the brush, just a dab, and then I'm tapping off like all of the excess. You barely want any product on the actual brush because you want to build this up slowly to get that really soft look because these are pigmented. So you can go a bit too hard with these colors, you know? I'm gonna start on the outer corner and just kind of focus on the lid and then just gradually use the brush to its advantage because this is a very fluffy brush. I'm just patting it onto the lid first and then I'm doing little swirling motions. I'm creating a slightly more rounded look for this eye look just because for halo eyes it works better. Just build up the colour on the outer corner and I'm going above my crease and blending it quite high below the brow so I can extend the halo part. I'm also holding the end of my brush to get a very light application of the colour. I'm now going to do the same on the inner corner. And then I'm just using the excess on my brush and just sweeping over the centre part just to join it all together. Now I have this kind of light gradient going, I'm going to build on top of it and I'm just going to add a little bit more colour onto the inner and the outer corner. I don't really want to blend it too much and increase the intensity elsewhere because I just want the focus on the lid. I want to keep this kind of blend going. So I'm just really keeping it tight on the lid and just blending out the edges so it all blends seamlessly together. Again, not using a lot of product on the brush, barely any. And just slow and steadily build this up. You can use a more precise brush for this if you'd like to. But but I just like the kind of floppiness of this one because it really helps just diffuse everything. Make sure to look at yourself straight ahead in the mirror to see if your blending is similar or the same. All right, so that's all I did for the base color. Now I'm going in with the P. Louise base in the shade Ruma Zero, which is just the white. I'm taking very little, just on the back of my hand. I'm gonna use my ring finger to pat out the product. So I've got a very light application of it. And I'm going to lightly apply it to the center of the lid. I'm using white because we are gonna be using that pastel blue. So I wanna give it the best chance. And I'm first applying it with my eyes open and then I'll close my eye and fill in any gaps that have appeared. And I just wipe off my finger on the back of my hand and I tap out the edges to blur them and make them softer to fade in. It just helps the spotlight eye process. And I do two light layers of the white just to help it pop a little bit more. Now I've done that, I'm just going in with the original brush we use and I'm just lightly dusting over the edges. I haven't added any additional product. I'm just literally doing this to help fade it in just a little bit. Okay, now we've done that, time for the fun colour. This is the colour Plot Twist and I'm just going to plop it on over the white and create a base for our halo eye or spotlight eye, whatever it's called. <laughs> I love this colour so much. Because this is a pastel, I'm just patting it on to get the most amount of colour payoff. Focusing on the centre and then patting out the edges 
with whatever excess is on the brush. Okay, now that is done. I wanted to add a little bit of depth. So I went in with the color Amsterdam. And when I say I went into the color, okay, again, these are highly pigmented shades. If you want to do a soft look like this, you've got to just be soft with the colors. Makes sense, right? So I've literally just tapped my brush in once. Okay, that's all you need. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that on camera, but it's picked up so much pigment on the brush. That in itself is too much to add a softness or depth to this eye. So what I then do is I just pat the color on the back of my hand. Like, look how much pigment came off of my hand there. It's ridiculous. And I've swirled it about, so I have very little amount of pigment on my brush. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on the inside and the outside of this pale blue, and it'll mix slightly with the pink and create almost a purpley color. And it just works so well to add just a little bit of dimension to the eye. So I really like the way this looked when I tried it out. So let's get on to doing it. I'm literally just gonna pat the edges and it'll just create a subtle depth. And when I feel like I need more color, I'm going back into the color that's on my hand until I can't pick any more pigment from it. Only then will I dip back into the actual palette itself, but I'll do the same process. I feel like this will probably feel like a lot of steps for someone, but when you're actually just like doing it by yourself and kind of messing around with the shadows, it does feel very, what's the word? Not natural, not ergonomic. That's what came to my head, what's the word? <laughs> It just flows. When you're doing it yourself, it, it just flows. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. But can you see, there's just something extra and it just flows together. I like it. I don't know. I don't know why I'm explaining myself so much. I just did it. So that is pretty much it for the mattes. Now I'm gonna go in with the shade Ivy and I'm gonna use this on the center to create a little bit of sparkle, a little bit more dimension. And I'm using this just dry. And I'm just gonna pat this while my eye is open. So again, I can see what it's gonna look like. And I'm trying to make sure it's on the, the top of my eyeball, <laughs> the like apex. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, the center of my lid. Why am I making it so complex? <laughs> Where my pupil is, if that helps. So it's center. I find this shade, it is more of like a sparkle than a shimmer, but I don't mind that. It's, it's pretty. <laughs> if you want it to give more of that foiled effect, then you can just wet it with some setting spray or some water. All right, so the pink on this side is looking a little bit more vibrant. So I'm just gonna go in with a smaller brush and I'm just going to just add a little bit more pigment to the inner and outer corner just to make sure we're all even. All right, so that is it for the lid. I'm gonna go ahead, do my base, and then we'll finish up the lower lash line together. All right, so I finished off this eye. I'm not sure if I'm gonna add lashes, but I've done my mascara and everything. <laughs> I've once again kept it very simple. So I'm going in with the shade Zama again on the inner and outer corner on the lower lash line. I look so orange right now, and I'm not quite sure why I'm hoping it'll sort itself out when I zoom out and things, but let's just deal with it for now. <laughs> I'm bringing it on a angle to enhance the circle shape that I'm doing of my eye currently. I'm bringing it slightly lower, like just into the bit of my eye bag <laughs> by here. Then I'm taking the shade Plot Twist and I'm just gonna put this right in the center and just blend it into the pink shade. And again, I'm bringing this slightly lower to enhance the circular shape. I've made the blue pretty much the same width as my actual iris, so it stands out. And then finally, I'm taking the shade Ivy and I'm going to kind of continue the line just below and bring it down a little bit further than the blue shade, keeping it in the center of the eye, just like that. I think that looks cute. And that is it for the lower lash line. I'm just gonna put some eyeliner on. I'm using this by NYX. It's the metallic eyeliner in the shade Gold. I was just gonna do nude, but I wanted to add a little bit something. So I decided to go with this. I've also taken it into the inner tear duct as well. For the inner corners, I'm just gonna use my highlight, which is the XX Revolution one in Echo. Guys, I have been using this absolutely nonstop. <laughs> 
I'm kind of obsessed with it. But I'm just gonna put this on the inner corners. Then I'm gonna add some mascara. I'm using the Revolution mascara, but this is the waterproof version. I'm hoping it's gonna stop all of the transfer that I get on the underneath of my eye. Thank you, Olivia, for all your tips. <laughs> I'm gonna be testing out some waterproof mascaras to see if that helps my situation. Before I forget, I'm gonna quickly tightline before I put my mascara on, because I almost did. <laughs> I'm just using a brown eyeliner. I'm just gonna quickly apply some mascara and get it all over my lid. You know, the usual. <laughs> anyway, this is the finished eyes. I don't think I'm gonna put falsies on. Even though I think it would look nice with false lashes, I quite like just the softness with my normal lashes with this one. If you wanted to, you could certainly add some falsies. I'm now going to go sort on my hair because it's still wet from when I washed it. Um, and then I will be right back and show you guys the completed finished look. Okay guys, so this is the finished look. I really like this. Again, I haven't put lashes on, but I really quite like it like this. It's just soft. I kind of match the lip a little bit to the pink. It's a little bit calmed down, but yeah. I overall really like this makeup. Kind of reminds me of Sleeping Beauty, you know, with the pink and blue. <laughs> but yeah, that is it for this look. Let's move on to the last one. So this is the third and final look. I really like this one. It's very on trend because it's like full colors, but it's quite simple. I am going to finish it off once I've done my base makeup and everything and kind of pull it out a little bit more. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into this. I'm going to be using the XX Revolution Eye Base today in the shade Basic. It's not my favorite, just an FYI. It really tugs and like makes the shadow a little bit patchy. So I'd recommend not using this and using even a concealer I think would be better, but I'm sticking to it. I put it on this eye so I kind of need to use it for this eye as well. It is really tacky so it'd work with like eyeshadows that maybe don't have the best pigment, but when it comes to like press pigments, <laughs> there's no issue with that. It just kind of makes them go all patchy. Gives you a bit of grief blending. I just wanted to try it out, you know. Okay, so I'm first of all going in with a big fluffy brush and I'm going in with the shade Basic Root, just the nude shade. I'm just gonna basically set the eye primer just because it is so tacky. I wanna help the blend in a little bit. So I'm just taking this, and just dusting it over top. Now I'm actually gonna do my brow bone highlight just cause I find it a little bit easier with looks like this to just get that on first of all. So I'm going in with the shade Ivy and I'm just gonna use my finger for this. And I'm just going to push it just underneath the brow and then I'm just going to take my big fluffy brush and just go right underneath it and blend it in just to soften it a little bit. Now I'm taking the shade Mila and I'm going to start off that wing shape that I've got going. So I'm just going to stare at the mirror straight on and I'm just going to place the shadow and create that winged out shape on the outer corner and I'm trying to match it up to the eye I've already done. Then I'm just matching the outer point to my outer corner and then I'm just using light little sweeping motions to blend the outer shadow a little. Now I've kind of got my basic shape, I'm just going to tilt my head back and kind of fill in the gap by here to get that pulled out winged shape. As you can see I'm placing it on an angle because we are going for like a winged out shape. And I'm just using the excess to do this. And then I'm going to place the shadow on the inner third of the eye, pretty much like a liquid liner. Now that's all set down, I'm going in with my big fluffy brush again. I'm not adding any colour or anything. I'm just going to literally do some big circular motions to blend it out really well. Just going to go in with the excess on the brush again and just blend the orange a little bit more. All right, now to deepen up the color, I'm going in with the shade Slasher, which is the purpley tone that we've got going on. And I'm just taking this on the same brush that we used for the orange, but I'm putting it on the very tip and just tapping off like all of the excess. Once again, I'm gonna keep my eyes open and I'm going to place the wing shape, not bring it up as high, just kind of in the center of the orange that we made. Now, because of my eyelid shape, I have to do this with my eyes open so I can see what's gonna happen when my eyes are relaxed. And because I have a hooded lid, I have to kind of almost create like a little shelf, <laughs> like a little bat wing. So I'm gonna be keeping that in mind when I'm doing it on this eye. This eye is less hooded 
than this one so it shouldn't be too much of an issue but I just have to bear that in mind so if you have lids like mine just take that into consideration. I'm kind of creating a triangular shape on the outer corner where the hood of my eye starts and that just helps me have a placement for the wing and I'm using light flicking motions to get the blend that I want with this eyeshadow and by flicking I mean bringing it off the skin towards the end of the flick if that makes any sense so I place my brush down and then bring it off as I pull away and this just again helps with all of the blending and creates that gradient and I'm holding the brush right at the very tip to get the lightest application. Now I kind of have that base shape on the outer corner I'm gonna gradually add some more color and then do the same as I did with the orange and bring it across the lash line but just a little bit tighter to my actual lashes. I'm not dipping back into the palette a lot I'm using a lot of just what's on my brush using excess blend in the colour that's already on my lid so I don't get too carried away with the pigment. This just helps make it easier for you for blending. Now we have the basic shape. I'm going to go in and just intensify the colour a little bit closer to the lash line because obviously over here it's a little bit more dramatic. I have a little bit more depth so I'm just going to intensify the colour just a little bit just by patting the colour on and then we're going to do some more blending with the Mila shade. Now I've got that colour down I'm going to go back in with the Mila shade and I'm going to blend a little bit further across the lid and also just above the wing. I'm going half on to the slasher shade and then half onto just the bare lid. This just brings the warmth back into the look that we had. And I'm just using light pat motions to blend over the colors. All right, so that is almost it for the eyeshadow. I'm just gonna go back in with the basic droop shade. I'm just gonna quickly sweep over the inner corner, just make sure that's all set. This will also help with additional blending. Now I'm going to tight line with a brown liner and I'm also going to take it just onto the top of my lid and create a very tiny little base liner and then I'm going to smudge that out with an angled brush just to add a little bit of depth to the actual lash line in itself. Once I've added that liner I'm just going to go over it with the slasher shade just to set it in place. And then I'm also taking the same liner on a little liner brush and I'm going to extend the inner corner. And then just to finish that off and kind of lighten it up almost a little, I'm taking the shade Mila on my little angled brush again and I'm just going to blend the edge of that line to soften it a little. Just using the very tip of the brush and I blend it into the shadow that's already on my lid and that just really brings it all together. Okay, so that is it for the top part of this look. I'm gonna go ahead, do my base, and then I'll be right back and we'll finish off the eyes together. So I'll just be one sec. Okay, so I have my base on. Let's finish up these eyes. I finished off this one off camera. So this is the look that we're gonna be doing. Keeping it pretty simple. I'm going in with the shade Mila and I'm just keeping this to the outer third, bringing the excess around halfway. And I wanna keep that almond shaped again so I'm not rounding it off and dragging it down. I'm keeping it kind of straight. Now I've put that down, I'm going in with slasher and I'm just going on a smaller brush. So I'm using this little angled one and I'm just gonna focus this right on the outer corner and blend it into the top shadow. I'm just gonna blend it all together. the waterline I'm taking this NYX pencil it's the one with the extremely long name <laughs> slide on glide on stay on and definitely a turn on waterproof extreme shine eyeliner why NYX why <laughs> this is in the shade golden bronze and I'm just gonna line the lash line with this then for a final touch of blending I'm going in with my big fluffy brush one more time and I'm taking my bronzer and I'm going to lightly dust over the edges to make everything more seamless and more winged out like this side and really blending it towards my temple just by doing that I feel like it makes such a difference to the overall blend and the overall pull of the eye. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply some mascara to the top and bottom lashes and then I'm going to go do something with my hair. <laughs> and then that'll be it for this look and that'll be the final one for the video. I hope you guys like this one. This is actually one of my favourites. It's really getting me into the mood for fall so I'm happy. <laughs> All right so my hair is not cooperating please ignore it <laughs> but this is the finished and final look for today's video I'm like merging into my fall background and I love it <laughs> I hope you guys like these more kind of 
soft or neutral looks with the Nikki palette just because I know with the amount of color choice that is in here it can kind of look a little bit intimidating so I hope this helped you see some softer looks that you can create with this and it doesn't have to be like a wham bam bright ass colorful look if you just wanted to do something a little bit more subdued, a little bit more natural than you can. I am planning to do another video like this with the brighter colours and do some more intense, vibrant, intricate looks. So keep an eye out for that. I'm looking forward to create some bright looks with this and also play with the shimmers a little bit more. Like on the lid, I can't wait to use the pride colour because it is stunning. And also the red can't wait to use as well so make sure you're subscribed for those future videos if you're new all you need to do is hit the red button down below and the little bell button and that'll just notify you when I upload next which is weekly I'm uploading on a Friday at the moment if you like these looks please give it a thumbs up so I know and yeah that is it for this video I'm gonna now love you and leave you I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and I hope I see you on the next one till then bye guys